Ice ages are pretty cold. During the last glacial maximum about 20,000 years ago, much of North America was covered in thousands of meters of ice, and the world's average temperature was about 5 degrees Celsius below today's average. But as we come out of this deep freeze, we're not heading to a balmy paradise. We're just going back to normal, which is what scientists call an interglacial period. And the next one might be coming sooner than expected. But who's counting? Not the supervolcanoes. These huge volcanic complexes have been quietly gathering energy for hundreds of thousands of years, waiting for their chance to blow. And when they do, they could push Earth into a new ice age. So let's get to know our planet's slumbering giants and find out how they might put the brakes on our budding civilization. Volcanoes are ranked by their height, size of their magma chamber, and volume of material ejected during an eruption. And supervolcanoes are the big daddies of them all. They've got magma chambers that are more than 400 cubic miles, or 1,600 cubic kilometers in volume, and they regularly erupt more than 1,000 cubic miles, or 4,000 cubic kilometers of ash and other materials. That's enough material to bury all of the United States under two feet of debris. And while there are over 1,000 potentially supermassive volcanoes around the world, only 30 have erupted in the last two million years. Supervolcanic eruptions are so large and energetic that they can change the course of our planet's history. Take, for example, the Toba Catastrophe Theory. About 74,000 years ago in Indonesia, Mount Toba roared back to life and blew its top with such force that it punched a massive hole in the Earth's crust, creating a lake of molten rock. The eruption unleashed 2,800 cubic miles, or 12000 cubic kilometers of ash and rock, and generated a cloud of debris that encircled the globe multiple times. Now this wasn't your average volcano smoke and mirrors. The blast obliterated anything alive within 100 miles, and sent temperatures plummeting by 35 degrees Celsius for several years. And because there were no airplanes or electric grids to power the lights, humanity didn't exist to record this fiery spectacle. But geologists have managed to piece together what happened by painstakingly drilling into the ash layer left behind by the blast, and radiocarbon dating the charcoal fragments found at various layers of sediment above and below the Tova event. And while there's some debate about the exact timing, most scientists agree that the eruption occurred sometime between 75,000 and 65,000 years ago. And many believe that it played a role in pushing our species to the brink of extinction. Humans survived the eruption and any subsequent climate chaos it caused, but 99% of the genetic diversity we have today was lost. If our population had shrunk to just a few thousand breeding individuals, it would mean that almost all of us alive today are related. In other words, we owe our existence to the fact that supervolcanoes don't erupt every year. In fact, major eruptions are so rare that geologists struggle to agree on what to call them. One team of researchers, led by Stephen Self from the University of Cambridge, suggested in 2021 that the term supervolcano should be reserved for volcanoes capable of eruptions greater than 2,500 cubic miles or 10000 cubic kilometers of material. By that definition, only 12 volcanoes on Earth qualify. Others argue that focusing on the maximum size of an eruption ignores the real issue, which is how often these eruptions occur. Carl Tape, a geologist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and his colleagues, proposed a different classification system in 2022. Their list includes 30 volcanoes that have erupted within the past two million years and could erupt again. They also defined ultra-major eruptions as those that take place once every 50,000 years or less. There are only eight of those on the list. As you may have noticed, nobody has yet agreed on exactly what makes a supervolcano a supervolcano. But we know that these massive explosions are triggered by the same forces that cause any volcanic eruption, the movement of tectonic plates. Like any volcano, supervolcanoes begin as magma chambers created where two tectonic plates meet. This molten rock is generated when one plate collides with another, and the intense pressure and heat hundreds of kilometers below the surface melt the surrounding rock. 
The magma then migrates upward through weak spots in the crust and gathers in pools. Now, depending on the exact composition of the magma and the local geology, this process can play out over tens of thousands, even millions of years, and the end result is a gigantic magma chamber. At some point, the overlying crust can no longer support the immense weight of the magma chamber, and it collapses, allowing the magma to escape. And that's when things get really messy. An eruption of this magnitude ejects so much material into the atmosphere that it affects global weather patterns for years or decades. During an eruption, the ascending magma violently expels gases dissolved in the molten rock and converts water vapor from the surrounding crust into steam, creating enormous pressure. When the pressure exceeds the strength of the surrounding rock, an explosion occurs. It's a process known as a steam explosion, and it's powerful enough to launch pyroclastic flows composed of hot gas and solid matter at speeds exceeding 450 miles per hour or 725 kilometers per hour. The expanding cloud of gas and debris forms a rising plume that eventually reaches the stratosphere. At this altitude, the particles remain suspended for months or years, blocking sunlight and cooling the planet. But that's just half the story. Eruptions also inject enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Depending on the eruption size, this can trigger runaway global warming. For example, if the eruption is large enough to reach the stratosphere, some of the sulfur compounds in the ash will react with water, oxygen and other chemicals to form sulfuric acid. This forms a thick haze of tiny sulfate aerosols that reflect sunlight away from Earth's surface. The resulting global cooling effect can lower average temperatures by up to 10 degrees Celsius for several years. At the same time, the eruption will release massive amounts of CO2, which is a potent greenhouse gas. Depending on the eruption size and frequency, this could raise temperatures by several degrees for decades or centuries. The interplay between these opposing forces generates complex climate shifts that can trigger ice ages. So how likely is it that this will happen anytime soon? Well, according to the 2022 study by Carl Tape and his colleagues, there's only a 6% chance that an ultra-major eruption will occur in the next 1,000 years. However, there's an 18% chance of a potentially super-eruption during this time frame and it's hard to say whether or not a supervolcanic eruption would actually trigger an ice age. As Tape told Live Science, quote, It depends on the details of the eruption and the state of the climate at the time. No two eruptions are the same. Even so, it's worth pointing out that Yellowstone National Park experiences roughly one supervolcanic eruption every 600,000 years, and the park is currently overdue. Sometime after the year 2000, Scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey began noticing increased seismic activity around Yellowstone. In September of 2021, there were more than 2,000 earthquakes in the region. While this level of activity is relatively normal for Yellowstone, the swarm of earthquakes was unusual due to their location, depth, and frequency. Now, fortunately, the uptick in seismic activity appears to be mostly confined to the northwest corner of Yellowstone and it doesn't signal an imminent eruption. The chances of a super-eruption happening in the next 100 years is somewhere between 1 in 7,000 and 1 in 1 million. Still, experts suggest that people planning to live in the area for the next couple of centuries should probably keep an eye on the park's volcanic rumblings. For now, though, we're safe to sleep soundly in our beds, knowing that the next ice age isn't on its way. But it's best not to become too comfortable. After all, at least eight volcanoes on our planet could still erupt in the next 1,000 years, and any one of them could push us into another deep freeze. Thanks for watching this episode. We've made thousands of educational videos over the years, and we've been able to offer them for free because of our patrons. If you'd like to help us make more videos, you can go to our support page.